Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hi, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Today I'll be joined by Bob Lowry. He's a renowned chemistry expert in the pool industry. We're going to talk about different startup methods. We're going to go over the pros and cons of each startup method. So if you do startups or if you're thinking about doing startups, this podcast is definitely for you. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open 7 days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Also receive priority service, enhanced rebate programs, a discount on your general liability insurance through SPA, a discount on your pool riding software through Skimmer, and an opportunity to co-brand with Leslie's on your social media, website, truck, and more. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Leslie's Pro. So I'm joined today by Bob Lowry, and he is the premier chemi- chemistry expert in the pool industry. And how are you doing today, Bob? Doing great. And so uh, just give a brief one-minute summary of your history in the pool industry for the listeners. Okay, well, um, I've been in the pool industry for 48 years. I am a chemist. I have owned two chemical companies and a publishing company. I've written 21 books on pool chemistry. I have um, given about 500 seminars as a CPO instructor for 21 years and probably certified 2,000 or more uh, service techs to be CPOs. I started the Pool Chemistry Training Institute about, uh, about two and a half years ago, and we certify people in residential pool chemistry. And that brings us to today's subject on pool startup issues. A lot of pool techs will be doing startups or be asked to do startups by the builder. Builders are pretty busy right now. Um, You probably know this, but since COVID-19, the pool building industry has just skyrocketed or exploded, however you want to say it. Like, for instance, here in California, one of the biggest builders is Blue Haven Pools, and they're about 300 pools out right now as far as build. So I think if you get a bid today, you're like nine or 10 months away from them breaking ground. And with that said, startups are extremely important in, for the pool to turn out right. And currently there are three methods right now. There's a barrel startup, there's a traditional startup, and there, there's a hot startup or acid startup. So in your opinion, which is the best method to start a pool? Well, uh, first of all, I think there's a couple of more startups uh, in there that you could that you could add to that. There might be five startups, but okay. or maybe one or two are a sub of, of the traditional ones. But um, I think there's um, the barrel startup, um, I think is probably for pools that have a probably a low calcium, low alkalinity source water. Hot startups are pretty much for exposed aggregate type of of finishes. And so that leaves us with traditional startup. And there's a few versions of traditional startup. But the barrel startup um, is a little bit difficult for uh, people to get a hold of. There's actually two versions of the barrel startup. There is one that's been around for quite a while from On Balance. And they recommend actually putting calcium chloride in the barrel. I'm sorry, they recommend putting sodium bicarb in the barrel and running the water through uh, the barrel to get alkalinity. And then the startup from Orenda also uses a barrel and they put in calcium chloride. So they build the calcium level up in one case they build the alkalinity up in the other case. The goal, of course, is to uh, create enough calcium and enough alkalinity in the pool that you don't get plaster dust. Those are the two methods to that are barrel startup. And pretty much, in my opinion, there are four people with that have very low calcium and very low alkalinity water. If your water is, quote, normal, then you probably should stick with one of the traditional startups. And there are a couple of versions of it. 
Leslie's has a startup method. There is another startup method that is from the National Plasters Council, uh, NPC startup. And then believe it or not, yours truly has a startup method that we call the Borate startup method. I would have never guess you had a startup method, Bob. <laughs> but you do everything, so yeah, you of course you have a startup. Go of ahead. Of course I have a startup method. And believe it or not, the startup method is available to you for free at PCTI.online. And then click on tech bulletins. And there is a, a nine-page startup that takes you through step by step what to do. Advantage is that it requires that you make a test every day on the water and then based on those tests it gives you a calculation to add each of the ingredients in each step so that you know exactly what to do and when you're done it gives you a written record of how the pool was started up i developed that with the guy that at the time was the education chairman for the national national plants plasters council his name was greg garrett and unfortunately, about a year and a half ago, we passed away. Um, he and I worked on on this startup method, and we uh, we put borate in on day one. There's a couple of advantages to doing it, uh, to adding the borate on day one. You can do the same startup without putting the borate in, um, and just skip that and go on with the rest of the startup. And it gives you a written record. Greg had asked me just before not too long before he passed away, if I could make it into an app. And of course, yours truly uh, has made five apps now. And so I made an app called the Bore Pool Startup. It's available for uh, Apple and Android phones. It's $9.95, $9.99, and it's a one-time purchase. And it goes through the exact same steps that are in the printed version, except it stores everything on your phone. And then you can download it to, to your computer if you want, so that you have a, a digital record of exactly what you did day by day, what the test results were and everything. It's a great way to have a, a permanent record. In any case, a traditional startup, the biggest thing to think, there are two things to me that are super important. And the first one is to make a test on the incoming water. And you need to know what's in the incoming water, whether or not you've got low calcium, low alkalinity, if it's normal, if you've got high copper or iron. And these are really important to know about because if you have a high copper and high iron, you need to make a decision about what to do about the metals because the amount of metal that is allowed in potable drinking water is in excess of what can cause a stain in a pool. So, and particularly with new plaster, new plaster is very subject to being stained. Um, we don't want to stain it. So if you have metals that together, <clears throat> copper and iron total more than 0.4, parts per million total between the two of them. If it's more than that, then you need to add a sequestering agent or you need to, uh, to use a metal removing product. And there are two types of metal removing products. One is a pre-filter that you hook up to the hose and it removes all the metals. It doesn't remove everything, it just removes metals. In my opinion, the best way to, to deal with metal in the water is to get rid of it. You can use a pre-filter and then the metal never gets in the pool. If on the other hand, you get metal in the pool, you can use one of these devices that's either a bag or a little cage type thing that you put into the skimmer. These things take quite a while to remove the metal. And by quite a while, we're talking about maybe a week. And in, in the meantime, those, there's enough metal in the pool that it could cause some stains. You can use a sequestering agent, but please understand 
that a sequestering agent only surrounds the metal with a chemical that prevents the metal from attaching to anything that might cause a stain. The molecule, the chemical, is organic. And because it's organic, it, it degrades, it biodegrades and breaks down. And sunlight and chlorine make it break down. So if you put a sequestering agent in the water, the metal is still in the pool. And this is really important that you understand that because eventually the, the sequestering agent will decompose. And when it does, the metal is free to cause a stain. So it's better to get the metal out of the pool. And you can use a sequestering agent along with the removal device that fits in the skimmer. So it does work in conjunction with that. So you can use it. But many startup guys, they're in a hurry. They, the, the last guy that's there fills the pool up, it gets filled. They dump a, pot, a couple of bottles of sequestering agent in and think they're done. And, and that's just not, not the way to do it. You need to measure what's in the water and treat it on the way, on the way in, or at least know what's gonna happen so that when the water gets full in the pool, you can start to, to deal with it. What we want to do in every startup method, day one, we want to get calcium to 150 parts per million. And this is really an important step because to balance the pool, to get a, a saturation index that is favorable or near zero, in order to calculate the saturation index, it's based on calcium saturation. And, and water is not saturated until we get 150 parts per million of calcium. So we need to get that in there on day one. So when you test your incoming water, if the water is less than 150 parts per million of calcium, when the pool is full, that's one of the first things you put in the pool is some calcium to get it up to 150. Yeah, in California, we don't have that problem because our tap water is pretty high in calcium. But backing up a little bit, the, the bag you're mentioning in the little container is the C later product. And that's one of the things I was going to mention. And the next, the next thing I had for you was the sequestering agents. That's one of the things that people are doing nowadays when they start a pool, throwing in, you know, Jack's Magic or the C later sequestering agent. And then, like you said, part two of that is knowing if there's metal, number one, knowing if there's metal ions in the pool water, you have to test for that, and then using the seal layer to pull it out of the water. And I've talked to them um, in length about their product, and it could be anywhere from 30 days to 60 days, actually, to pull that metal out of the water. Um, it takes a long time, sometimes in some cases, depending on the flow, a lot of variable speed pumps don't move the water as much. So um, that is a highly effective product. So, so you're saying just putting a sequestering agent in the pool when you start it up is not enough. It's definitely not enough. It's definitely not enough. The EPA allows uh, up to 1.1 parts per million of copper in drinking water. And I just finished telling you that anything above 0 0.4 parts per million causes a stain. Yeah. So it's not that all water has one part per million of copper in it, but it's allowed to have up to 1.1. And so you could be getting almost three times the amount of copper that can cause a stain in your pool right out of the hose. That's exactly right. And, you know, um, Lamont has a new test kit also, the Color Q 2X Pro 9, which has the copper and iron um, test, the pho photometer test on there. And I recommend if you're doing a startup, at the minimum, you should have that test kit. And maybe at the maximum, you should have the spin touch because that gives you just about everything so quickly. Yeah. It's a time-saving thing, but again, the spin touch is seven to eight hundred dollars, and then each of those discs is probably about two fifty or three bucks. Yeah, so, it's pretty expensive, but it, for a startup, I think it's worth it because you're charging for that anyway. So you're charging yeah. anywhere from five hundred to six hundred or seven hundred dollars to start up. So it pays for your app, of course, for ten dollars, and it'll definitely pay for the spin touch disc. So it's not a big issue if you do a lot of them. If it 
were me, I think what I would do, there are three companies that I'm aware of that make a pre-filter. And the, the company that makes the see you later, um, they make a single and a double filter that you can just connect up a hose to. And, and the water on its way into the pool uh, goes through that filter and it removes all of the metals, not just copper and iron, but, but everything else, aluminum and manganese and all the way down the line, even lead. Um, so it takes everything out of the water and then you don't have to deal with it. And if I were doing a startup, if there was any metal at all coming in, I'd just be running the water through that filter period. And if I were a startup guy, I would just include the cost of that in my startup. And, you know, you have to, you don't have to buy the housing every time, you have to buy the filters that go in it. I would include the cost of a couple of those filters, uh, filter cartridges in every startup and just use them on every startup and everything's going into the pool is perfect. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's, it's a great idea. And if you do a lot of startups, I highly recommend investing in that pre-filter by see you later. And again, you're going to pass the, tr the cost of it on to the customer anyway, so it shouldn't be a big deal using that. And one of the big issues with a startup with a plaster or quartz pool is the plaster dust. And that's why the hot startup is kind of popular in California because we have a lot of quartz surfaces that are built. Right. And you can actually see the plaster dust just evaporating with, when you, you know, four gallons of acid in there. And so it's, the hot startup is popular, but, you know, again, it may not be if you're a rookie, you should be doing the hot startup. It's kind of complicated, yeah. um, but it does get rid of the dust. So the plaster dust is an issue, especially with a traditional startup. What are some of the ways that you can, besides the hot startup, that you can do to kind of minimize that plaster dust? Well, of course, you know, hot startup refers to the fact that you're going to put a lot of acid in the pool. And some of the methods actually pull the pH down to about... Uh, probably four or 4.5 in the pool. And the purpose of it, of course, is to dissolve part of the part of the surface that they left on top of the aggregate. So they want to get they want to get rid of that by dissolving it. But plaster dust also dissolves uh, when the pH is a little bit low. So if we can if we can make the water a little corrosive, it will dissolve the plaster dust. And that's the idea is that, first of all, if there's a lot of calcium already in the water, we don't get so much calcium dust. But lowering the pH or adding some acid also dissolves some of the, the calcium. So uh, it keeps it as an ion. So uh, it's probably uh, better to do that. Keeping the pH on the low side uh, prevents scale from forming and therefore present, prevents the precipitation of calcium. What would be the lowest pH you would recommend in a startup, um, you know, the reduced plaster dust? Well, I probably wouldn't get below, much below seven. Mm -hmm. uh, seven, two maybe. Seven probably is the outside I would go. I wouldn't go below. And there's a lot of precautions when you have a new plaster surface. For instance, I've seen builders not put a towel around the hose before in the bottom of the pool, um, people vacuuming the pool too early. What are some of the cautions with a new plaster surface? Because I think plaster is still the number one surface type that people have installed in their backyards. Right. Well, you know, we use plaster. They've been building pools for, you know, 100 years or whatever. And if there was a perfect surface, we'd probably all be using it. And the fact of the matter is, um, plaster is probably the best surface that we've come in, that we've been able to figure out. You know, there is aggregate and quartz, and maybe quartz is is perhaps the best uh, right now. But not everybody can afford a quartz pool. But at any rate, uh, we keep trying to make it better. But plaster seems to be a a pretty good thing. But one of the some of the things you want to be very careful about doing is as the pool is filling, you want to make sure that that hose does not have any metal or anything on the end of it or even any rubber that's got any sharp edges or anything because the hose can quite frankly move around as the hose is whipping around in the pool it's making a streak in that plaster it's the plaster is real 
uh, susceptible to practically anything, at least for a few days till it starts to hydrate and, and, and cure. We don't want to get any wheels on it. We really, uh, we have a lot of people, the homeowner goes, oh, I didn't want to leave the water on overnight. I was afraid it might overfill the pool. Oh, yeah, it's practically, it's going to take you 24 to 48 hours to fill the pool. And even if it did overfill, it's not going to overfill by that much. You know, you're not wasting water. So uh, it's important because if you stop the fill and then turn it back on in eight hours or whatever, you're going to have a line in the pool where you stop and it's permanent. It's not something that can be removed. It's there forever. Mm -hmm. So you cannot stop a pool once it starts to be filled up. You cannot do that. You can't use anything with wheels on it for at least, I don't know, at least two weeks, maybe a month. That kind of depends, but um, you can't use anything with wheels on it. So you can't put a robotic cleaner in there. You can't use a vacuum with wheels on it. You can't do any of that stuff for about a month. And anything that you do like that is going to mess up the surface. Yeah, and I've seen like dogs step into like a little beach entry and they leave their footprints there forever. People too. Yeah, and you know they're anxious to get into it, and that's that's the worst part. When somebody spends a hundred thousand dollars on a pool, it gets filled up. Then somebody starts clearing the water, and it looks so good they want to dive in, and it's not ready yet. They got to wait a few days, yeah. and they don't want to do it. So last thing is one, one thing I get a lot of is customers, the builder will build the pool. And this is very common here in California and all across the country, too. They'll build the pool. They'll just basically start the hose, fill it up, and then they'll walk away. And the customer just has the pool with, filling with water. Yeah. And then a week later, I get an email saying, hey, you know, the builder built the pool. They filled it. And now everything's all messed up because it was no startup. What can I do to correct it? And after the fact, is there anything you can do to fix plaster dust or problems with the surface, things like that, and without a proper startup. You know, there's so many things that can go wrong if you don't do a startup and at least start paying attention to uh, typical water conditions. But there's not too much you can do about reversing it. Of course, you can, if you have still some plaster dust, you can add, uh, you, can, you can acidify the pool a little bit and and dissolve some of that stuff back in. Actually, plaster dust, if you can see it, it can be filtered. But many pools today are being built with a, a sand filter, and a sand filter is not a very good filter for filtering out plaster dust. Cartridges are, and D for sure is, but um, uh, it may be that, that you can use a um, a clarifier, not the alum type that flocks, but the other type that's an organic polymer, uh, it can help to remove some of the plaster dust. You really want to get the pool balanced as quick as you can balance it and, and get to the typical normal levels. I know that many stores use ranges for pH and alkalinity and so on. And some years ago, I created a a method of targets that just has a single number. And it seems like people are using a single number helps them understand what's wrong with their water much easier uh, because they're either on target or they're off mm -hmm. and it doesn't give them a broad range. And so I would rather use uh, targets, but get the pool into the recommended ranges as quick as you can. and. And if there's anything in there that's, that's a potential stain causer, you have to do something with that. Even if it's after the fact, get a complete water test. Find out if you've got any metals in there. Find out if you've got low calcium or high calcium and deal with that right away. So those are things you have to deal with right away. You can start, if it's been uh, two weeks, you can probably start to do some vacuuming and uh, maybe put a robotic cleaner in and start getting some of the stuff out of there. If there's any stains, you may want to use some 
Jack's Magic or some of the the uh, the products from Natural Chemistry. Uh, they have some good stain removal products and get that those stains off of there as soon as you can. Also, to see you later, uh, believe it or not, you get a stain because metals have reached their saturation point in the water. And if you remove some of the metal from the water, there's more room in the water to hold more metal. And so by removing some metal from the water, you can actually remove a stain from the wall because the stain can redissolve back into the water. There's, there's now more room for that metal to redissolve into the water. But that only happens when you remove it with, with a thing like the see you later or a filter because using a sequestering agent doesn't remove it. So it doesn't change the saturation. Yeah, well, one product that I like to use for plaster dust is the Easy Care Butech. I don't know if you've used that product or heard of it, but it, it gets behind the scale and kind of lifts it off. And it seems to be really effective. I, you know, in testing, they also make a product called Scale Tech, which is like the similar product to that. And I found that to be pretty effective um, in mm -hmm. testing. So there are products out there you can probably find um, aftermarket to kind of get the pool back. But definitely, yes. I think the key is to have the startup done correctly in the beginning, right? As a homeowner, if the builder walks away from the pool, I, I would have to say, please go spend the money, call somebody that's a professional and get the pool started up correctly. You know, you spend $100,000 on it, it's like spending a hundred thousand dollars on a car and then not putting any oil in it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it just, it's not, not the right way to do it. So I hope you found that podcast helpful. I think the mystery of startups is one of the things that stops people from doing them. It's really easy. Once you know that you just have to be really focused on the balance of the pool water, balancing the pool water initially for the first week or two, I think it's super critical and then logging everything in case there's a problem. I think if anyone questions the chemistry of the pool, having a record or a log of what you added to the pool and what the chemi chemistry readings were that day is extremely important when you do a startup. Other than that, it's just brushing the pool, answering questions for the client, and of course keeping everyone out of the pool until the plaster has cured. Definitely that's one of the hardest things I think with the startup is letting them know that you know it's inviting, it looks great, but you can't jump in that pool, it's going to ruin the plaster. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, this is the fifth or sixth series that I recorded with Bob Lowry. And if you're looking for the older podcast that I recorded with him, simply go to my website, swimmingpoollearning.com, click on the um, podcast icon on the banner, and then I'll take you to the previous episodes. You can also learn more about all of Bob Lowry's material at pcti.org. Again, that's pcti.org. You can find articles and also the link to his residential certification course over there. And if you're in the industry and you're looking to enhance your business, definitely check out my coaching program at poolguycoaching.com. A lot of great benefits for joining there, including a discount on your general liability insurance. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great your week and God bless. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open 7 days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's Referral Program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.